Hello my fellow gamers, welcome to a short tutorial on how to survive the nights and build during the day in Big Castle, a really unique new RTS and base building game from indie developer Mana Potion Studios. Now let's get to building because the night is dark and full of terrors and we must be ready. You start each game in Big Castle by building, you guessed it, your castle. This is your main building and if demolished it's game over. It's also a place from which you get new villagers who are called solar citizens in this game. Each solar citizen can construct buildings, but they cannot repair them. For this we need to construct a builder's guild and employ citizens as builders. You can rotate buildings with C and V key to orient them any way you want. First we need a sawmill to harvest wood from surrounding trees. This resource is mainly used for construction of buildings, but also for capturing new areas of the map which are called cells. The other basic resources are food, stone and sunstones. We will cover these later in the video. Next we need a house to increase the maximum number of solar citizens who can live in our sunny kingdom. With new citizens the need for food goes up, so we have to expand our kingdom into neighboring cells to acquire areas where food can be produced. When you click on any cell you don't own, in the lower right corner you can see how many resources it takes to capture that cell and what can be harvested inside of it. This one has cows in it, so we need to construct a farm in that cell to produce food. Farms and other food production buildings are limited to one per cell. You can also find cells with boars and deer which require hunter's huts, while cells with lakes need fishermen's huts. And lastly, cells with flowers need fields and windmills to produce crops. In case you are interested to see what other RTS and base building games are coming out in 2021, check out the video list on the right here or in the description below. Now back to the build order in Big Castle. Once our farm is constructed, Cows are herded into it and will start producing food if there are solar citizens working on that farm. Most buildings have room for two workers by default, but this limit can be raised by spending stone. The amount of stone and other resources you have you can see on the top of your screen where there is also the countdown until night time and with it dark and monstrous enemies. The game will supply you with a starting garrison of soldiers armed with swords and shields. It will also indicate the direction from which the enemies will attack by lighting up blue torches at the borders of your kingdom. This is where you need to mount your defense by setting up your soldiers and fortifications. This first raid is just a probing attack, so no need for walls or towers, but later you will need even more than that to survive the night. The decorations build tab offers a variety of stone sculptures and vegetation to customize and beautify your kingdom. Just do not go overboard with these, as you will spend resources you will need elsewhere. As night falls, solar citizens run and hide while their soldiers await the enemies. Combat in Big Castle is quite fast as your soldiers and the enemies deal a lot of damage to each other. You can keep your soldiers alive by using a common RTS tactic of rotating low HP units out of the front line with healthier ones. You can even slow down time to make this easier. Once a new day dawns, it's time to get serious about protecting your kingdom. Your first investment should be an archery range where you will be able to train archers. Each of these archers cost a fixed price in sandstones and take a while to train. You also need to build more houses to increase your population so you will have citizens who can be trained as archers. Your castle spawns these new solar citizens at a certain rate, so planning and timing is key. This rate speeds up and slows down depending on the condition and happiness in your kingdom. There is an entire happiness system in place and you can see the indicator for it in the top UI bar. Higher population reduces happiness, but buildings such as taverns will increase it. We will cover this in more depth later in the tutorial. If you have been enjoying this video so far, please do not mind me reminding you to hit that like button below and subscribe if you would like to see more content like this in the future. Now we need to start constructing fortifications to defend our kingdom. Let's begin with a tower because it has multiple useful features. First, it has parapets on top which provide great protection for archers and give them a good vantage point to shoot from. Second, it has higher HP than the walls. And third, it has secure doors which prevent enemies from just climbing up. Other defensive buildings include the fence and the wall which you can construct to guard your borders and deny entry to the dark ones at night. The fence is cheaper and quicker to construct but has less HP than the walls. There is also a gate but we do not need that just yet. Once the walls are completed, you can place the archers on the walkways, but keep in mind they are much more exposed on them compared to the tower. With more citizens and soldiers, you will start to run low on food. You will need to find another cell with food 
capture it and construct a food production building, like the hunter's hut on this cell with wild boars. Successive waves of enemies are much more numerous and so it will be for every next night. Soon they will start bringing rams, catapults and worse. But right now we are running out of sunstones. This is because sunstones are used to heal soldiers. Luckily, we will always have a sunstone source close to our starting castle. All we need to do is to capture that cell and construct a sunstone workshop in it. This is like a mine and it produces new sunstones at a constant rate. Remember, you have to send some solar citizens there to work it. Next, you want to choose to construct a market. While the name of the building suggests a large structure, it is actually just one small stall. It indicates that there is a bonus feature somewhere, but you can get a bonus only when you build several ones close together. In this case, we create the market by building several stalls close to each other. For a market to operate, it needs one solar citizen to work it and for you to choose a type of good to sell there. If you need to upgrade the production of food, wood or sunstone, you need to spend stone to add additional solar citizens to corresponding production buildings. To accomplish this, we will need next to capture a cell with stone and construct a quarry. As always, remember to assign a citizen to work there. To keep expanding our kingdom and to construct more fortifications, we need to increase wood production even further. To do this, we will construct another sawmill, assign two citizens to work it and build more houses to raise the limit of solar citizens. It doesn't take long for the forces of darkness to grow in strength and numbers and this next attack comes with rams and ogres. You want to target ogres with archers, while your swordsmen need to attack the rams to prevent them from breaking through your fortifications or destroying your structures. Post-battle sunstone resource can heal your wounded soldiers, but you can also resurrect dead soldiers with a priest unit which we can produce by constructing a church. We can also train new more powerful melee units like knights and pikemen by constructing a barracks. Pikemen can stun and attack enemies at long range, while knights deal more damage but have no protection. More soldiers means more population and more population means less happiness. This is now the right time to construct a tavern and employ some solar citizens to help maintain happiness with a beer keg or two. But happiness is not our only problem. Food is limited and to increase the supply we need to use up stone we mine to upgrade food production buildings so they can employ more workers. This will help temporarily, but as each night approaches and forces of darkness grow in power, we will have to expand and strengthen our kingdom by capturing more cells, constructing more resource production buildings and growing our population, fortifications and the army to work and defend our newfound territory. Once you have enough wood, stone and sunstone, you can construct trebuchets on top of your towers. There are long range powerful weapons which are best used on large formations of enemies. Later you will unlock spells to aid you in combat and trust me, you will need all the help you can get. There are two ways of surviving the night. Either kill all the enemies or wait for the return of dawn. Do not worry too much about your soldiers as you can resurrect them come dawn with priests. Just make sure that your castle is in one piece. Those are the basics of how to play Big Castle. A link to the game store page can be found in the description below. You can watch more tutorials and guides by clicking on the cards appearing on the screen right now. Thank you for watching and happy gaming.